Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing, well, actually just PlayStation 5 stuff. This video is going to be a little bit different to normal, um, so if you haven't watched one of my videos before, this is a slightly different format, because there have been so many crazy PlayStation 5 uh, rumours, specs, and just overall craziness that have been floating around over the past couple of days, I want to just try and clear things up, just so the people who are confused by all of this actually have some level of, like, like understanding what the hell is going on. Um, some of these rumours I didn't think were going to kind of take off how they did, so initially I didn't even cover them. But yet, multiple sites have reported on them, and, well, you know how things go. So the first thing I would like to start out with are a couple of supposed PlayStation 5 specs. And there have actually been a ridiculous number of PS5 specs, but two of them in particular have gained a lot of traction. The first is from a NeoGAF forum member, Odium, who is apparently a verified developer. The staff over at NeoGAF have verified him, although he says that... Um, he is not under NDA for the PlayStation 5, which is why he can hint this stuff, which kind of raises the question for me of why are you hinting it if you're not under NDA? So if you are in, under NDA, you cannot hint it, but if you're worried that information will be traced back to you or your friend Bob who told you what the hardware is inside the PlayStation 5, you wouldn't hint it. This is one of the reasons that I'm so grateful to anyone who does provide me information when they're clearly under NDA. For example, when I leaked the Ryzen 3000 release date, or when I released all of the platform details for X570, or when I leaked the fact that Comet Lake has like 10 processor cores back in the day, people who told me that were breaking NDA. But anyway, um, as I mentioned, in this particular image, allegedly are the specifications for the PlayStation 5 uh, GPU. So the coups, you can probably guess, would represent CUs. But if you also uh, look at the rhyming scheme, it seems to match the megahertz, the frequency of the GPU. And so, as I said, multiple people were trying to solve this. And Ronin Strife over at Reset Era came to the conclusion that it's 52 CUs running at 1743 MHz. Multiple websites then reported the findings of his of 11.06 T-flops. The thing is, he made a typo. And this is not, once again, me uh, criticising Ronin. It's clearly he made a typo. But multiple websites then took this figure of 11.06 T-flops and then ran with it. When it's actually 11.6 teraflops. You can do the math yourself. I do have a video where I detail how these calculations work. Um, and why teraflops are not the be all and end all when it comes to the performance of consoles. And furthermore I also go much more into architecture of uh, GPUs. So I'll try to remember to link that in the video description. But. Long story short, 52 is the number of compute units, so that's your base. You multiply that by 64, because there's 64 shaders per compute unit. You multiply that by 2, because it's 2 operations per clock. And then finally, as you probably guessed, you multiply that by the clock frequency. And what do you come up with? And that's right, 11.6. So clearly, the person just made a typo, which is a pretty common mistake. I'm sure we've all made typos, so I'm not... Um, I'm not criticising the person, instead I'm more frustrated by people who didn't even think to double check this stuff. And furthermore, there have been other uh, leaked specifications or supposed leaked specifications. Uh, another website reported that the PlayStation 5's uh, performance is up to 15 teraflops, which would be a ridiculously expensive um uh, ridiculously expensive console, like the Xbox is going to be expensive, but this would be even more expensive than the Xbox Series X is to produce. And so, yeah, just I would probably say that there's no way in heck that either of these specifications are true. Um, but I'll go into more why of that in a moment. I just want to do a rumor cleanup first. The next thing that started to float around 
was because of an interview with WCCF Tech had with a company called AdShare. And basically, they are producing a software ray tracing solution, which is called Local Ray. In the interview, it was stated that um, the software solution does not use DXR, but they'd also picked up a major win with a console manufacturer. Immediately, people started to speculate that that means that the PlayStation 5 is using a software-based ray tracing solution, and this is actually not true. So, I'm not saying that uh, AdShare are lying, or that they were misquoted by WCCF Tech, it's just it's missing some of the context. And in what my own interview with AdShare, they actually stated to me, rather the CEO stated to me, that... Um, it actually could be used for current generation consoles. Now, obviously, he's not going to state anything, but I, I can't remember my exact fr uh, question to him, but I basically phrased it to try and figure out if it was for this next generation coming up, like if it was for that. And he instead said something like, no, but imagine it for the older generation. This is not an exact quote. I'd encourage you to watch the video if you want, but... Long story short, he seemed to imply it's for the current generation. So whether that's for Sony, whether that's for Nintendo, or maybe even Microsoft, because they probably would not use DXR for the current Xbox uh, One X, for example, I don't know. But I believe that uh, this ray tracing solution is not for the PlayStation 5, and I don't think it's for the Xbox Series X either. I think that the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 are using very similar RDNA 2-based ray tracing. I don't know how they compare to one another, because obviously the configurations of the GPUs will be different, and I also, just as importantly, do not know how it compares to NVIDIA. What I understand about NVIDIA's next-generation cards, GeForce 30, ray tracing performance was something that they're doubling down on because obviously it was a big um it was a big criticism of GeForce 20 ray tracing performance and while i don't believe that um let's say standard rasterization performance is not going to improve at all i think a big focus for nvidia will be ray tracing so how rdna compares to uh the next generation nvidia cards i just don't know i've heard everything from the ray tracing uh, performance of next generation AMD cards is really good, all the way down to, eh, it's okay. Okay, now we're going to move over to the next series of uh, speculation and rumours and stuff. I did say that it was absolutely packed. Um, so this one actually comes to us via Twitter, and two individuals, Cartman Bra, which, I'm sorry, that's the best name ever. Um... I'm sorry, I just I can't get over that name. It's actually amazing. And also Rogaine, who are two data miners. And basically, they've been doing some digging to find leaked results and benchmarks, and they've found multiple entries for Flute, Gonzalo, Ariel. Um, the two long didn't read is all of those are linked to the PlayStation 5. So if you don't want to take things like to a technical level, I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible so that this can be as to a wider audience as possible. But the long story short is these are PlayStation 5 um, kind of engineering samples or basically APUs. So um, a result was discovered by Rogame where he said essentially this particular processor was roughly on par with, uh, sorry, GPU was roughly on par with an AMD RX 5600 XT. And immediately, people just started to lose their mind. And people were like, what the hell? Is this, like, is he trolling? Is it, like, uh, is the PlayStation 5 a turnip? And, yeah, basically the internet just went absolutely nuts. Um, so I've been digging around with, um, I'm sorry, speaking, excuse me, to Rogue Game, as well as uh, Cartman Bra. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing when I say that name. I'm sorry, I know it's not professional, but I'm only human, damn it. And anyway, they started to do more digging and digging and digging for the results. And both of them have basically come to the conclusion that the results here just don't line up. So it's not that these are not engineering sample uh, PlayStation APUs. Instead, 
that they are from very early results and they are not running at the appropriate clock frequency. So most likely the results were running at much lower speeds and the uh, GPU was running at not the 2 gigahertz that we know it can run at but at a much lower speed. For example, uh, 1 gigahertz or 1.2 gigahertz. Therefore, the performance of this chip actually running at essentially a 5600 XT performance but at a ridiculously low clock frequency is actually really impressive. Um, if anything, it's uh, an actual nod towards the PlayStation 5 Silicon because essentially the Silicon's running at way below the rated clock frequency and still performing pretty damn decently. And what's kind of interesting with all of this is that the timings seem to match with several things. One is the GitHub leaks, which are now infamous. And the second is when we started to hear that developers were obtaining those V-shaped PlayStation 5 development kits. And slightly after that, Komachi, uh, this is in August, discovered Oberon Gen 2, Gen 1, and Gen 0 with Gen 2 being 2 GHz and then Gen 0 uh, running at 800 MHz. So basically, uh, each of the Gen 0 and Gen 1 are backwards compatibility modes for the PS4 and PS4 Pro, respectively, and then Gen 2 is running at native 2 GHz. And with those particular internal tests, it was uh, 36 compute units, so I know the inevitable question is, well, what does all of that mean for the PlayStation 5? And what does it mean for final performance of the console? Well, if someone is trying to tell you that the final GPU memory uh, clock speed and CPU clock speed are kind of locked in right now, I would be very skeptical. I don't think we're going to see radical sweeping changes. Like, they will not suddenly redesign the GPU and, you know, double the number of compute units or something like that. But when it comes to memory clock frequency, there can be a tweak. When it comes to CPU clock frequency, there can be a tweak. From what we understand, the Xbox Series X is hitting 3500 MHz for the CPU. Um, and the APUs for the PlayStation 5 were hitting 3200 MHz. We actually saw that originally with Tim Apisak early last year. Now, my personal opinion is that for everything I'm hearing, the CPU of the PlayStation 5 has increased in speed. That was very early engineering samples. And I believe that the CPU is probably very close now to the Xbox Series X. I think they're probably either identical in clock speed from everything I'm hearing or within 100 megahertz of one another. Uh, I don't think there's really going to be anything in it from CPU performance. Uh, I think the two machines are going to be interchangeable. They both have 8 cores, 16 threads. I believe both have the same cuts in their level 3 cache. And yeah, they're both based on Zen 2. So I don't think there's going to be really anything in it in terms of the CPU. The GPU, they're essentially going quite a different design. Microsoft's design is slower in terms of clock frequency. Uh, they're only running at actually slightly under 1700 megahertz, assuming they don't bump this up. Uh, I'm going with the internal documents. It was just under 1700 megahertz, 1675 if you want me to be precise. And Sony, meanwhile, are going slightly narrower and they are going faster. Inevitably, I'm going to be asked, well, okay, with all of these leaks, what do I think of the PlayStation 5's configuration? I will be totally honest. There are several aspects to the console that I still do not know about. And I think that, quite frankly, there's a lot of features for the consoles, both consoles, which we're not going to know about for some time. And I don't just mean the number of T-flops or ray tracing performance, but I think that there's going to be a lot of cool features that people are going to be like, wow, that's actually awesome. That is not just down to how many pixels it can push on screen. And I also think that upsampling and those type of techniques are going to be a huge part of the next generation consoles for both Sony and Microsoft. And that's something that I'm currently researching. So 
I'll talk about uh, that more in a future video. With that said, several people who really would not like to be named, and if you choose to believe that I know this, or I've spoken to these people, or uh, I'm, you know, lying, that's totally down to you. Uh, all I'll say is that I have leaked several very important things before, including the Ryzen 3000 release date, the first generation of Narve, the renders for Radeon 7, I leaked the fact that Narve 21 and 23 both existed, I leaked the fact that the next generation RDNA cards would have ray tracing, I leaked the fact that Intel's Comet Lake would be 10 processor cores, I leaked that NVIDIA would have a refresh with faster memory, with the uh, uh, RTX 20 series, although to be fair, I was partially inaccurate with that because they also increased the CUDA cores. And I've also had a few misses as well, so you can choose to believe or not. But I have been told that the GitHub results at one point were accurate. However, several things have changed since then, and some of those are feature sets. So in the GitHub results, uh, there was definitely some errors and things that were not working right with testing. For example, it said that ray tracing was not enabled, and, or was not supported, excuse me, which is just patently false. The PlayStation 5's ray tracing solution, from everything I've heard, is quite similar to that of the Xbox. Um, so, there's that. I believe that the configuration is probably 36 or 40 compute units. I cannot get that confirmed, but it seems to be most logical because all of the development kits, all of the results we've had so far, including the GitHub stuff, plus a few other things that I've been told, seem to all indicate that this is the, 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 the end configuration. But I believe that clock frequencies have not been nailed down. I also believe that both consoles are going to be extremely impressive. And in some ways, the narrow and fast approach for the PlayStation is going to be a big win. It's going to have a lot of pixel pushing power, a lot of throughput, and there's going to be a lot more to this uh, next generation consoles than T-flops. I think that uh, the next generation is going to be really cool, and outside of consoles, I think it's going to drastically impact how PC gaming functions as well, because of the importance of the SSD. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, Normal stuff if you did, like, share, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.